So from the academic side, if you have not uh, uh, familiar with uh, my backpack, uh, that's again the way that we pass out our grades. Uh, we only publish grades twice per marking period, every five weeks, uh, once at the two week mark and once at the three, uh, five week mark. And that gives our young men enough time to uh, establish a baseline and again, really feel like they've got an authentic um, set, set of work underneath them before we start reporting grades. Um, <clears throat> the uh, marking period actually ends tomorrow, uh, Wednesday. It does reflect five weeks worth of work, and it's uh, based uh, just like the it's based on the material that was also uh, published at the interim, <clears throat> and then uh, the new work they've done in the last three weeks. Now Thursday, as a reminder, is a fresh start for all our students, uh, and so they all start out with 100s or zeros, depending on your. Uh, your, your half glass full or half empty type of thing. Kind of moving forward after the end of this week's marking period and this weekend, uh, we now have uh, Parents Weekend coming on up. <clears throat> and uh, that's uh, usually a pretty exciting time for both the academic and military side of things. Uh, I'll be talking mostly about the academic side. Um, just to make sure that we're all on the same page, uh, we need to RSVP for uh, attendance at the uh, Parents Weekend, uh, and that's done through the registrar, and we do that for COVID reasons and also to try to make the experience here as smooth as possible uh, for folks that are really traveling uh, quite, a, uh, quite a distance uh, in some cases. Um, <clears throat> so Jeremy Eubank is the registrar for that. There should have been an email as well as newsletter links. Uh, to that, or you can always go to our website and look for Jeremy Eubank. Um, <clears throat> he's also known as Coach Eubank to, to some of you uh, folks, but he is the registrar. Uh, he is handling the, the RSVPs. So just to make sure you have uh, some visibility on what the beginning of the parent weekend will look like uh, and kind of help you uh, fact check some of the excitement that uh, our cadets will have, uh, that morning we will be in classes from 7.30 to 11 o'clock. And so if you arrive early for whatever reason, uh, just keep in mind that your, your, your young man is uh, supposed to be in classes and he'll probably be on low simmer, even if he doesn't want to tell you that. Uh, and so let's try not to distract the guys by uh, going into any of the academic areas uh, before they're dismissed uh, from class at 11. Uh, at 11.15, we'll move to a, our Beta Club induction. Beta Club is a, an honor uh, society uh, with a mission to also uh, provide service. So not only are we identifying uh, our cadets that have um, a pattern uh, or, or, or track record of good academics, but also um, giving them an opportunity opportunity to develop a heart for lead, uh, a heart for service. Um, there will be a guest speaker for that. And again, unfortunately, um, the Beta Club induction being held indoors. Uh, does have a, a limit to the number of people that we can uh, bring into our chapel. And then from 12 to 6, uh, we ask that as you come on the campus, uh, if you had not come on campus earlier for the Beta Club induction, uh, that you check in first at the main hall. There you'll get um, a copy of your appointments for the afternoon, again highlighting why the RSVPs are particularly helpful, uh, as well as a campus map and a copy of your cadets' grades. Um, and then essentially you'll just follow along uh, both the map and the schedule to uh, meet uh, the, the faculty uh, as well as in some cases the TAC officers that are in your, in your uh, young man's life. Um, so our parent teacher conferences will go from one to six uh, on Friday. Uh, other exciting things going on uh, at 4.30 and at uh, six, uh, not to get into uh, Coach Veshi's uh, lane there, uh, but we're, we'll be excited to see our varsity soccer and varsity football folks uh, do, uh, <clears throat> I think it's going to be a scrimmage and uh, kind of showcase in front of their, their uh, families. Um, <clears throat> there is the meet and greet listed on the screen, as well as uh, the opportunity for dinner passes uh, in the local area. If you're a returning family, um, you, you may have been used to eating on campus. But again, uh, keep in mind that our mess hall is really um, the dining room of our cadets that live here on campus. And so we really do have some limits as to how many uh, outsiders, uh, no offense, that we can introduce uh, into the mess hall in order to keep our core cadets safe. 
Um, and then if you happen to go <clears throat> on dinner pass, um, the, the, uh, the deadline uh, that's particularly important there is a young man needs to be back by uh, 9 p.m. Um, <clears throat> to uh, get prepared for Saturday morning. Uh, Saturday morning, we resume with a parent check-in uh, on Main Hall, again, from 8 to 10 o'clock. Um, <clears throat> Parent-teacher conferences, 8 to 10 o'clock. Uh, two uh, other events that may be of particular interest that morning uh, on my side of things. Uh, there's a 9 a.m. college counseling, NCAA initial athletic eligibility. So if you've uh, been uh, you know, talking with Coach Veshi or Ms. Bell or your young man to start mentioning how he's excited about college or he's dreaming about uh, collegiate athletics as a younger young man, um, uh, they'll be there to kind of explain that process. At 10 o'clock, um, new cadets, uh, plus some of our second semester cadets uh, from last year that missed this cadet crest ceremony uh, will be crested. So you, you do uh, have the opportunity to uh, be given a sharp object uh, that looks like a pin and uh, it'll go onto his uniform and uh, the infirmary will be standing by with band-aids if necessary. Um, I suppose I shouldn't joke about stuff like that. Um, and that's at 10 o'clock on the stairs of the chapel. At 11 o'clock, there'll be a parade to recognize the honor roll and to honor parents. And so that's a pretty exciting time for our cadets. Um, after the parade, uh, those of you that have uh, won the silent auction, I believe that uh, you'll be able to pick up your winnings at that point in time. Uh, proceeds of the silent auction uh, go to the parents council who are then uh, tracking on a series of gifts and projects that are going on campus. Uh, just rest assured, for those of you that are far away from campus and are participating via Zoom through this weekend, uh, we do have lunch for the cadets that are not checking out. We have student activities for those cadets. Um, and so, um, you know, I, I do want to reassure you that um, there, it's not going to be one of those lonely movie moments where everyone seems to uh, escape campus and, and our young men are uh, left alone. I know there's a canoe trip and, and, and some other things like that. Some pretty exciting times uh, that, that have been scheduled. Um, and then uh, we do ask um, that for the after parade uh, RSV, uh, um, our, uh, after parade parent teacher conferences, uh, that we really um, need to be careful about uh, RSVP uh, just because uh, some of the faculty. Uh, maybe uh, trying to uh, get, get back uh, to their own uh, weekends and, and families. Um, and so we'd hate to have a family come on in unexpectedly and then not be able to uh, meet up with uh, a faculty member or be delayed while that faculty member returns to campus. On Sunday, um, <clears throat> again, this is particularly relevant for those that might either not be able to take the three-day weekend or are not able to come to campus. Uh, we do have a local morning church uh, in, in the local churches, uh, student activities, town checkout for cadets um, that are not checking out with their parents and guardians. If you do check out your young man, you're not, uh, you're not obligated to wait until uh, Monday at 5 o'clock to return him. Um, we do know that uh, you do have busy schedules back at home. Uh, Monday, again, is, is, is uh, by coincidence uh, Columbus Day. Um, but it's really our day for our guys to uh, have a little bit of a downtime and when possible um, also spend some time with their family. And then uh, finally for me here, um, <clears throat> looking forward to uh, the next step, uh, a couple of uh, high value, uh, particularly stressful or um, um, possibly stressful um, events coming on up. Uh, this Saturday is the SAT. Um, and that registration has already passed, um, and Coach Veshi has uh, been tracking on that and has rooms uh, safely set up to both obey the COVID um, requirements as well as the requirements of the College Board. Uh, similarly, we do have the ACT on the 24th of October. We do recommend that um, cadets that are um, needing to improve their scores uh, take both the ACT and the SAT. SAT. Uh, we do find that uh, many young men that struggle on one test uh, are much more successful on the other test because the two tests really do approach um, the, uh, the, the assessment for college in, in very different ways. And so um, some guys are very amazed that their scores seem to uh, jump a 10 or 20 percentile um, just by changing the test format. And what we do find is a lot of colleges, all colleges really don't care which entrance exam that you take. 
um, in terms of scholarship monies and admissions, um, they're willing to translate from ACT to SAT and, and vice versa. Uh, <clears throat> the Wednesday after Parents Weekend, um, we do have the National Testing Day for the PSAT and the uh, National Merit Scholarship Qualification Test. Um, so that's what NIMSQUAT uh, stands for. Um, and that actually uh, impacts our grade 8, 9, 10, and 11 uh, graders. Um, and they're taking two versions of the uh, PSAT uh, or practice SAT as appropriate for their age. Um, our grade 7 folks will also get uh, a little bit of age-appropriate testing. Uh, and we'll be testing their basic skills and seeing uh, what has happened uh, over the last uh, six weeks here at Hargrave as we uh, check their IXL scores um, from day one to, uh, to, to that day. And then um, we'll also take advantage of, of that day for our uh, seniors and postgraduates uh, where they are completing their, uh, finishing their, starting I hope, and, and maybe finishing in some cases, uh, college applications and, um, and scholarship applications. And so um, it is uh, Mr. Veshi and uh, Captain Bell's intention um, that uh, every young man is ready with a, uh, a college application um, by the 1st of December. Um, regardless of whether they execute that right away, um, the idea is to uh, minimize stress by having um, that first college application done. Uh, we do find that a lot of young men procrastinate, uh, not because they're uh, procrastinators, but they're actually um, kind of uh, exhibiting some sort of anxiety. And so that first uh, college application under the belt oftentimes opens a floodgate uh, for, for guys to um, you know, become uh, more comfortable in both the interviews for scholarships as well as the interviews and application for college. And um, that's it for me. And um, I seem, I admit to uh, not tracking on whether or not um, Mr. Uh, uh, Veshi is here online. So um, I think uh, Colonel Brown's going to take it from here, though. Thanks, Jim. I'll cover athletics as uh, Coach Vesci is doing uh, some college counseling with uh, seniors and juniors uh, this evening. Uh, this past week, when we had um, our COVID cases, we uh, reverted back to phase two protocols, which is a much stricter uh, posture for athletics uh, until we felt uh, that our COVID posture changed after test results came back. And um, we went about uh, a week in our phase two protocols while we waited test results and for some other uh, cadets to, to be checked. Uh, so we're back to our phase three protocols, where, which are just a different mask wearing uh, level uh, during uh, sports time. Uh, regarding uh, external competitions, um, uh, I made the decision that if, if soccer wanted to have interscholastic competitions, they could they could wear their mask while they're playing, and that's what we're going to do. The coach uh, and the players um, uh, have been doing that to some degree, and we think that's the best way to get some uh, competitions in uh, while keeping our cadets um, safe. I know it'll be somewhat of a, a nuisance to have a mask while you're playing soccer, but uh, it will also keep them safer than uh, not having a mask. And I think the cadets are excited about getting to play some competitions. Uh, football will also follow some strict mask protocols. Uh, they do plan on having an inner squad competition uh, for parents weekend so the parents can uh, see their cadets play. Uh, but upcoming athletic contest, uh, soccer will play at Fork Union, uh, which is about a little over two hours away. And then also our cross country runners will, will play at Fork Union and see the dates there. Uh, they'll run the cross-country meet. Uh, again, both of those have uh, uh, COVID protocols in place in terms of uh, ball swapping and, and cleaning and uh, certain breaks for uh, hand washing and hand sanitizing, things of that nature. So um, we'll uh, post those schedules and any and all uh, sporting events on hardgravesports.com. Our athletic director is uh, going to keep that updated. Uh, like I said, we'll have varsity soccer and football competitions at Parents Weekend, um, and we uh, will limit uh, attendance to two fans uh, per athlete uh, based on the um, state protocols for gatherings. Um, but we're looking forward to that, that weekend. I think the parents will enjoy seeing uh, 
some uh, live varsity uh, competition. I think, uh, I think that's all he has for athletics department. Uh, go ahead, Jim, I'll talk military department as well. Um, the military department manages uh, class rings. This is typically for juniors, um, but if there's a senior or postgraduate who wants a class ring, the rep will be here on October 23rd um, and to pass out information about ring ordering. And then on Tuesday, November, November 10th, they'll return and actually take the orders for the rings. And then the rings typically get in around January or February uh, timeframe, but uh, just so parents are, are aware of the class ring. And, and again, any transportation needs uh, for the upcoming parents weekend, uh, uh, the point of contact is Barbara Lone. So she'll handle those. And then my notes, uh, uh, pretty pretty simple. I uh, wanted to give you kind of a COVID update um, uh, in case somebody didn't see the memo that we put out or the communication we put out. The uh, COVID cases were limited to uh, four cadets who had uh, who represented two sets of roommates. Um, uh, two of the cadets were asymptomatic and two of them were symptomatic. Uh, our quarantine uh, process worked. Uh, they stayed quarantined. Um, until they were cleared. And uh, then when we did our um, testing of up close to 25% of those that went out on open weekend, uh, all of those test results uh, we did on Wednesday, which is three days after folks came back. So um, that's in the front end of any type of uh, 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 virus incubation period. And everybody came back negative. We've been obviously monitoring temperatures. Uh, I will tell you that um, some cadets can be a little prone to, uh, to drama. Uh, I'll give you an example. We had a cadet who had a, a higher than normal temperature. So we went through our protocols. Um, he was, he was quarantined for a couple of days while the test went in. Uh, the test results came back. He was negative. Uh, his fever was, was, uh, tied to something non COVID related. Uh, and yet, uh, we try to keep the cadets informed. Uh, but sometimes immediately somebody has a high temperature, they automatically feel like um, they may have been exposed or what have you. So uh, sometimes they create a little bit drama. So if you hear from your cadet uh, any issue or concern about that, just know that we are executing our protocols to the letter uh, and, and being able to mitigate um, exposure. And as the uh, exposures occurred um, 10 days ago or so, uh, I feel real comfortable uh, with how we handled that, how our nurses handled that, how our cadets handled that. Uh, so I was, I was proud of all things, but just know that sometimes the cadets will, will spin a tail a little bit, but we're doing everything we can to keep all of them safe. Um, and currently right now we have uh, no one in quarantine um, and uh, uh, just one cadet, cadet who had a high temperature that we're, uh, uh, he's at home and we're waiting his test results. Um, uh, but again, we also had a, a staff faculty member also had um, a fever and some chills and some other COVID-like symptoms and it turned out to be a gastrointestinal uh, issue, uh, not COVID related. Uh, so again, we, we manage these circumstances and try to keep everybody informed and again, execute our protocols. And I think the boys will, uh, will be doing just fine. I am, uh, just so all parents are aware, as with most teenagers, uh, you know, wearing a mask can become cumbersome. Uh, I am cracking down on uh, uh, cadets who may not be compliant uh, with our mask wearing requirements. Uh, so just be aware of that. Um, and before a cadet is, is sent home for an out of school suspension for non-compliance, uh, you will be contacted and also he'll have had ample opportunity uh, to become compliant. Um, so just, just be aware that we're really taking that seriously. Same for staff and faculty. Um, I'm holding them to a high level of accountability as well for, for wearing our masks and conducting our protocols. Uh, we've also had, uh, for the past two weeks, we've had a company uh, who works seven days a week uh, to spray down all of our surfaces in our common areas, all of our common touch points. Uh, and our staff is, uh, doing the barracks and the uh, barrack common, barracks common areas like the bathrooms. 
Uh, so again, we're doing everything we can to keep the uh, campus uh, clean, healthy, and safe. Um, uh, we will have uh, two tax per company by the end of October. We've been on a um, a hunt in uh, advertising and interviewing a number of candidates uh, for the past month or so. And uh, by the end of the month, we should have uh, two tax per company on deck, which I think will be great for the cadets. Uh, they'll have, um, you know, again, signed uh, leaders uh, that will help them navigate not only Hargrave, but, you know, the issues that happen when you have 120 plus boys uh, on campus. So I'm excited about these tax coming in. You'll get to meet them electronically. Uh, we'll send out some bio information on each one as they arrive. Um, and we're excited to have our new commandant arrive on October 19th as well. Uh, he and his family uh, should get here around the 14th and then he'll hit the ground running on, on October 19th. Uh, so we're very excited about getting our military department uh, up to speed and uh, moving forward. So uh, those are the big updates. The next slide has uh, some highlights coming up uh, in the next month. Uh, all those these uh, 10 for October, uh, tomorrow we are having our first of two uh, blood drives on campus. So we're excited about the cadets who um, are willing and able to give blood. Uh, this is something that's been a tradition at Hargrave. Uh, the cadets organize it with the help from our infir infirmary. And so we're excited tomorrow to, to do our part to uh, donate blood uh, to the local community. Here's just a, an overview of some of the upcoming events, many of which uh, Dr. Tung have already talked about. So um, just to give you a snapshot, and more importantly, those that aren't on the call will be able to see a snapshot as well. Uh, with that, I think, uh, Dr. Tung, we should have come to the end of our slides, and now we can open it up for questions. Okay, well, I actually don't have any questions that um, appear to be for um, for common uh, distribution. So what I'm going to do is uh, unmute all your microphones and then um, mute them all again. And then what happens is uh, I'll just call on you guys. And so uh, first up is uh, Ms. Dixon. Um, I just lost her. Sorry, hang on for a second where I, where I get yeah, to. Yeah, I'm, there you go, I'm here. Okay. okay. So um, let me apologize in advance for my question. I'm not trying to incite fear, but um, I just have a little concern given the political climate in the country right now. The boys come home for, um, you know, they have a break. They come home on the 30th. And then on the 2nd is, I think on the, that Tuesday following is when election is the national elections. So I'm just kind of thinking in my mind, you know, should something happen where, you know, they have to kind of be home for a while. So I'm just wondering, you know, given that, that they come home, is there a possibility to kind of extend the time to come on campus like the, you know, day after elections as opposed to like a day or two before? That's just a concern I'm having. That's, that's it, not trying to incite fear in anyone. Um, Ms. Dixon, I'll tell you, if for some reason you have a uh, personal concern and you feel like you need to hold your cadet longer at home for, for any circumstances that may arise, just contact the school and we'll, uh, we'll work with all families uh, in, in that manner. Um, I certainly hope we have a uh, peaceful transition uh, from some of the rhetoric on the news. We may have to wait till all the absentee ballots come in. So, <laughs> but uh, certainly, um, uh, again, as that as as those days approach, if there's any concerns, just reach out to the school, and we'll work with any family. Okay, thank you. All right, and um, all right, um, um, Miss Alley or Mister, I'm not sure if that I, uh, I can't tell from the name. No. Um, and you may uh, you may have already addressed this. Uh, if they want to take the ACT, is that deadline passed as well? Um, I don't think so, but it's rolling on up, rolling on us pretty fast. The ACT uh, is, is October twenty fourth, so um, if it's it should be either this week or uh, we'll be into the uh, emergency late uh, late fee. So um, I can check with um, Coach Veshi and. Uh, push that back out. If you hey, want to send me an email, tongue at uh, we, we can uh, 
verify that. Okay, Jim, thank you. I just did a quick check on oh. the ACT testing dates online, and it looks like the next registration deadline is November 6th. Oh. Or December 12th test date. Oh, okay. So oh, okay. Day. So if they want to wait, they can take it then. Okay. Right, yeah, we do have other test sites here in the area. Okay, so, oh, so, so the one is, so the deadline's already passed for the 24th? I believe so, from what Colonel Brown just said. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, um, uh, Ms. Nelson, um, Ms. Nelson. Sorry, I didn't mean to unmute, I'm good. Okay. Sound good? That's well, all right. Um, Ms. Nelson, since I heard your name, I'll just tell you that your son is still doing a miraculous job getting up a little bit earlier than everybody else and running the uh, calls in the morning uh, that had to start at 6 a.m. And he's up dressed and making that happen uh, before 6. So very proud of him. Thank you, Colonel Brown. I really appreciate you saying that about him. Uh, Dr. Revere? Well, while we have a momentary pause, I'll, I'll let all the parents who are on the call know that um, uh, yesterday we do our normal room inspections and we literally only had a handful of rooms that um, failed room inspection. So I, I knock on wood, but that was a good sign that the cadets are uh, getting with the program and learning how to make their bed and arrange their room and you know, keep it neat and tidy as they go to class. So. Um, just know that that's a great thing. And I hope when they come home for open weekends or holidays that they do the same thing uh, at home. So we'll see what happens. All right. Um, I'm not sure if Dr. Revere is there or does she just has an open mic. We'll come back to her if it turns out that, that she uh, has a question. Uh, all right, well, I don't know if there are any other questions. Um, I'm gonna try the unmute button again here to make sure there wasn't something tragic. So, um, Ms. Tucci, do you, do you yeah. have a question? Uh, yes, I actually, I, I inboxed them to you, but um, sorry, cause I, I came in like maybe four minutes late, so I did miss uh, the first screen. And then I just also heard mention of something about a break being on October 30th or students coming home. Is there a, is that just an open weekend date or is there actually a break of some sort occurring on October 30th? No, I, that October 30th is just an open weekend. Okay, gotcha. Um, I do remember, I think back on uh, the day, orientation day, that there was mention that you might prefer to keep the students there during Thanksgiving just because there's not enough of 14 day period to sort of so do all that COVID procedure all over again. What is the update on that? And when exactly is- uh, we, we, No, we, we do not plan on um, uh, keeping any cadets here over Thanksgiving weekend. And uh -huh. after, the, after the open weekend, we will test uh, approximately 15 to 25% of the core depending on who, who goes and where they go for the uh, open weekend. St statistically speaking, if you, if you test 15 to 20% of our population, um, you'll, you'll be able to uh, identify if there's any uh, uh, you know, COVID ramifications. Okay, so the actual date for the Thanksgiving break, campus will be closed and those students will be leaving. What right. are those dates again? Would you mind mentioning that? That those dates are um, Thanksgiving break begins on November 20th and cadets return on the 29th. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, Sara? Yes. Uh, I just must stop that. Your first, is that your first question? Uh, Sara. Sara, yeah. sorry, ma'am. I just have a question and I thought while well, we have more people listening. Um, we're not from close, close by, but we're gonna come and um, pick up Michael 
And we were thinking to take them maybe to Colonial Williamsburg or, or somewhere like that. But is there anywhere closer that anybody knows of that would be a fun place for teenage boys and a nine-year-old boy? Um, the, uh, there's, there's certainly a lot of, um, like Patrick Henry's birthplace. Um, they do, um, interactive things there, you know, pioneer days, uh, sure. as well as, uh, uh, is it Frederick Douglass or George Washington Carver's uh, birthplace also? So we could, um, if there's any parents that have a suggestion, um, I think you guys have already been out to Smith Mountain Lake, uh, if I remember right from last year. Um, but, uh. I don't think we have. No, we didn't go there. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Smith Mountain Lake is the local um, kind of golf course lake area. You can rent uh, boats even that late in the, um, in the season. I uh, just don't know what Virginia weather is going to be like. Um, so there, sure. there are places closer than uh, a, a three or four hour drive away. Great. Thank you. You bet. All right. Um, Ms. Tucci again. Nope, you're, I'm sorry, that just, uh, and uh, I thought I saw Mr. McClure unmute for a second there. And uh, I'm good. Dr. Okay, excellent. Um, Kobe's phone and then Mr. Higdon. Hi, this is Kobe. I'm the, uh, Cadet Brinson's mom. Could you clarify what time they can leave on Saturday? Uh, right after the parade. So that's usually about 1, 1.30. Got it. Okay. And, and then unless you have an appointment to te uh, talk to a teacher or something. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. You bet. All right. Um, Christy. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm going out of order, my, my apologies. So, um, uh, Mr. Higdon, I think you were up next, and then Christy. Uh, sorry, Dr. Tommy, I didn't have any question. I'm not sure how, how I popped up, sorry. Oh, that's all right, that's all good. Um, so, Christy, Christy's phone is also now muted again. Miss, uh, or Mr. Francis. Uh, hi, I was just wondering if uh, after the call, rather than hang up, can you take the slides back so we can see like one or two past slides? Oh, I'd be happy to. Yep. Thanks. Uh, Ms. Felton. Okay, hi. Uh, my question is for the seniors. So I didn't know if you all did like senior pictures or like, like the cap and gowns or anything like that. We do. Um, the senior picture day has been rescheduled to be October 19th, and they will be wearing um, a parade. Uh, I think it's parade versus full chapel. Essentially, it's the kind of the blue blazer uh, type military suit with white pants, uh, suit and tie, or uh, a tie. And they have uh, several poses that they go through, and that's kind of the standard portrait package. And then I think there's actually another version where people go around campus and, and have some, uh, you know, pictures next to the canyon, uh, cannon or next to a tree. Again, whatever senior portraits might, might look like. Um, but the, 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 uh, the 19th of October is the standard uh, portrait day for our seniors. Okay. And um, are those packages sent to us so that we can choose or are they just taken and then we pick from the proofs? Uh, there, I, I believe they're electronic proofs. So what will happen is you'll be given uh, access to a website and um, that way you'll be able to look at your son's pictures and then, um, then you can choose to order them or not to order them uh, after seeing the proofs first. Okay. So it's an external contractor that we've hired called LifeTouch. So I apologize for not being super um, firm about the details, um, but, but it's, uh, they've done a pretty good job for us in the past. It's just sometimes there's a miscommunication about the exact process. All right, so before I um, 
the um, before before I, I wrap up here, um, I will go back through the slides. Um, I'll let Colonel Brown uh, make any closing remarks. But uh, as usual, will happen is after after you're dismissed, um, we will be able to um, essentially. Well, I'll hang back, and we'll we'll, we'll all hang back as long as there are any questions. Um, so, uh, and I'll review those slides as requested. Um, if you could just direct me after Colonel Brown is done. So, uh, sir, if you have any last uh, comments? No, I'll, uh, one, I'll just thank everybody for taking the time to uh, join the call. Uh, we like to keep the lines of communi communication open and flowing as much as possible. Um, with the upcoming Parents Weekend in a couple weeks, uh, you know, a week and a half, just want to reiterate that um, uh, we welcome all the parents uh, to show up for that day. Uh, most of the things will be taking place indoors. Our parent council will be having a silent auction, uh, which will happen in one hallway uh, where you can walk in one door, see all the items that are available for auction, and then um, head out a different door. But if you can support that auction, that'd be great. Um, also, we'll be practicing uh, social distancing in the bleachers, uh, for, for all the sporting events, as well as the parade itself. Uh, so just be prepared for that. Um, you know, make sure your family members have their masks. Um, we want everybody to have a good time, but we also want to make sure it's safe. And also uh, all of our pictures and things that we post on social media uh, represent Hargrave in a good light in that manner as well. Uh, but we're looking forward to having you guys on campus. Um, the cadets have been working really hard. Um, if you can imagine being a teenager and having to learn how to drill and wear your uniform, uh, it's always amazing uh, what they do when they perform. And so I'm excited for them to perform for you at Parents Weekend. And that's kind of what we tell them is this is their opportunity to show you what they've done uh, from the time they've been here. So look forward to that happening in about a week and a half. If for some reason there is inclement weather, uh, just so you know, if there's inclement weather, we'll make that call as soon as we can. But if there is inclement weather, we will cancel the parade. We will not have it indoors. Uh, so just um, just know that for your planning purposes, if the weather uh, at that time looks like it's gonna be questionable, we will not have an indoor um, parade. Uh, other than that, I look forward to uh, seeing you soon. Yeah, Colonel Brown, are you still there? Dr. Tong? Yes, sir. Uh, yes Mr. Bowles. It, yeah, thanks. Uh, sorry for the late question. So for the parade, right, or the soccer scrimmage, et cetera, it's only two people per family. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, without going into a lot of RSVPs, again, for the gathering uh, of people in, in the state <clears throat> of Virginia, it's 250 uh, or less. And uh, with 120 cadets uh, and staff and faculty, uh, we have to limit it to uh, two per family, knowing that there will be some families that, that don't show up. So um, okay. if, you, if you have uh, a request um, to bring potentially one or two, one extra or something like that, uh, just reach out to me and uh, we can have that discussion. Uh, obviously down at the soccer field, there's, there's plenty of room, uh, but we do have to watch our numbers. Understand, thank you.